Hello, everyone. Did you miss me? Miss me, miss me. Now you want to kiss me. Just saying. Husband's like, too much, Jed. Hello, everyone. Got bit by a bug or something, swelled up like a balloon. I figured that you wouldn't want to see me like that. I spared you the horror of that experience. That's why I was out. I'm here. I'm back. It is what it is. Life happens. Anyway, it was time. It was time to talk about Boss Babes. I needed to do it. I know you needed to hear about it. And I came across fantastic content while I was out. I was getting very excited to share it with you. So welcome back, everyone. And I had trouble titling this episode because I wanted to title it. Well, I did title it This Boss Babe Can't Figure Out Why She's Single because she is truly, truly a masterpiece. You will hear from her today. But the other title I was kind of toying with was Wife Humiliates Her Husband by Treating Him Like a Toddler because we're going to show you a chart, a chart that a wife made for her husband to infantilize him, turn him into a little baby. Actually, though, I mean, stickers is all there. It's crazy. All right. So what do we have today? We're going to talk about modern women and what they define as successful. What does that mean to them? And why do so many modern women wind up unhappily single? Why does that happen? We're going to dig into that. And there's a, the, that's the video I'm talking about that we're going to open with. Woo! Get ready. I'm also going to react to that daddy sticker chart that I described that the wife made for her husband, really unbelievable stuff. And wait till you see the expressions on their faces too. I feel like you could just look at them and size that up and you would get all you need to know. I want to talk about the impact of birth control pills on female perception of men. Does she like you on the pill and suddenly go off the pill and doesn't like you as much? What's going on there in terms of what's going on? Because a lot of guys may be dating somebody on hormonal birth control. You're going to wind up with a different girl when she goes off? You never know. We're going to dig into some of the research on that. Hunter Avalone, you remember Hunter? We covered him here on the show. He's actually coming here in January to debate me on red pill stuff, on politics, on all of it. It's going to be exciting. He uh, went in on Sneeko. He talked about uh, female promiscuity. He gets a lot of it wrong. I'm going to explain what he gets wrong and why. So I'll be reacting to that content of him covering Sneeko on a Fresh and Fit episode. Fantastic stuff. And of course, of course, I'm going to give you my daily matrix se uh, session where we're going to expose the latest tools of the matrix. Listen to this one. The World Health Organization is pushing for a legally binding pandemic accord. What does that mean? Why do I care, Jed? Oh, you wait and see, because all member states are going to be involved. And guess what? The United States is a member state. So what does that mean for you? We're going to talk about it. And Bill Gates, our friend Bill Gates, oh yeah, he's funding a vegan dairy startup. And the World Economic Forum is pushing lab-grown steak. We're going to show you what that lab-grown steak looks like. They made a video about it. They were really excited. Me, not so excited. Let's just say that. All right, packed show today. Let's get started. Don't forget, by the way, chat is open. Super Chats will be read. Malik is here. He's going to address the chats as we go along. You want to hit that subscribe button and that like button throughout the show. Don't make me have to say it. That's my Christmas gift. You ask, Jed, what do you want for Christmas? Well, I want you to subscribe. I want you to like, comment. Yay. All right. So let's talk about modern women. This video comes up. I see it on Twitter. And it says, I am fiercely independent. I have everything. And that really weirdly scares guys off. Let, I'm going to stop and go throughout this video and be a little annoying. But... We got to play it. So let's take a listen. I hate to say this, but like all of my friends who are married or engaged, they are not as successful as my friends who are single. My friends who are not damsels in distress, all single. My friends who are damsels in distress, all taken. Okay, pause there. I'm looking for a partner. Okay, I'm going to do this a lot. First of all, she says that, you know, some of her friends are less successful than others, right? Her single friends are most successful. So define successful for me. I would have stopped her right there. What does successful look like to you? Because I'm sure that her version of successful is corporate, you know, money, salary, um, all those things, right? And she's deciding that the single friends are more successful than the married friends. But I would ask her, do the married friends have stuff that is really good about their life that the single friends don't have? Like, look at the distorted way they view successful. So if that woman is married, she's home, she's staying home with her child, 
She's living in a big, beautiful house. She gets to play outdoors with her kid all day long. She has a beautiful life. She's cooking. She's got the Christmas music on in the background, and she's making some great stuff. She's spending a lot of quality time with family, getting outside. To me, that reads like, like a successful life. Does she have, you know, the CEO title? No. Does she have a certain amount of money coming into her bank account from her job, her corporate job, or her whatever job she has? Maybe she owns a business. Where, no. But define success for me. I find it really interesting that these women, these modern women, only define success based on a trajectory that completely excludes women who choose to stay at home. To me, success correlates with happiness. Interesting. Um, secondly, she brings up damsel in distress. What does that mean, doll, to you? Ask people these questions. And this is a good lesson. When you hear people talk like this, don't let them get too far. Because then you'll miss stuff. You'll forget. It's hard. Because they throw all the vomit, all the words out, you know. What does damsel in distress mean to you? Because she says damsel in distress. The people that are a damsel in distress to her. And by that she means she's envisioning like the woman inside of the burning building shouting, save me, save me. And the big strong man comes running and rescue her, rescues her. That, that's her version of like a damsel in distress, like a rescue me girl. That's what she's thinking of. She says that those women all have mates. But the ones who aren't a damsel in distress, they don't have mates. So ask yourself why that is. Maybe are, are, does damsel in distress actually mean not what you think it means? And maybe those women are just more willing to kind of let their guy be a guy. Maybe they're willing to lean back a little bit and they're more feminine and they recognize that if they are in that burning building and it is going up in flames, that they're going to want that big strong man to come up and get them out. That's what the firemen look like. When's the last time you saw a fireman that looked like me? Seriously, this small coming your way. Let me tell you something. People out there in the chat, you see a fire, you call the fire department, you're up there, you're screaming out, waving a handkerchief outside of your burning building, and somebody comes around and looks like me, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. I'm not going to be able to get up and down those stairs holding somebody. Forget about it. I have a hard enough time holding my babies like 30-something pounds. I'm just getting that. Come on. I'm little. I'm small. You want to see that big guy coming around the bend, muscles intact. He's going to climb up those stairs. He's going to go into the danger for you. You know it. So, honey, just to let you know, you're also a damsel in distress. You're only a damsel in distress when it's convenient for you, right? When you really need the help. All other times you want to be the boss babe. But it's interesting to me that she, she frowns on this damsel in distress when, in fact, I think that those women that have mates that are damsel in distress are probably just feminine women, right? Probably just feminine women, that's all, that she has a distaste for and probably a bit of jealousy for because they've got all the guys and she's sitting there single despite everything she has. All right, Malik, we're going to go back. We can keep playing. Not a half. I'm not looking for my other half. I'm a complete person. I want someone who's the same. What, what's that quote? It's like, be a boss, date a boss, build an empire. That's 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 uh, that's the plan. Oh, I you am know, fiercely some, okay. independent. Let's pause success. that. Um, I remember on The View once, uh, Whoopi Goldberg went nuts. I said something like about that Jerry Maguire quote. You guys know the Jerry Maguire quote where she's like, you complete me. Oh, Whoopi wasn't having that. No, she was like, you're a whole, she went through that whole montage just like that. And I was just like, mm, I thought it was a nice line for a movie. It appealed to me, honestly. I <laughs> liked it. This woman would be horrified to learn that I actually don't call my husband my other half. I call him my better half because I love him so much and I'm so proud of the person he is. And he's so accomplished in my mind that I'm like, you're, you're better than I am. And I'm glad. I'm like, I'm glad that you're way more efficient and way smarter and have your shit more together than I do. So she'd just be horrified. Oh, Jerry Maguire. She'd be like, you're a damsel in distress, Jen. Sometimes, honey, and I'm fine to be that way. Okay. Be a boss, date a boss, build an empire. You've heard that. You've seen it on the t-shirts, all of that stuff. So I'd be curious to ask her, okay, you want to be a career woman? You want to get that career guy? Build an empire. Okay. Where does your bo boss title end? Tell me, do you still consider yourself the boss when the check comes at the table, you're out to dinner, and d do you split that bill? Or does, that, does your boss title get stuck in a corner when it's not convenient for you? So somebody comes to the house and is trying to break into the house, juggling at the chain, whatever. Do you, do you step out in front and your, husband, your, your boyfriend at the time or whoever, you're like, no, I got this. I got it. No, you don't. You're going to go hide behind whoever's in that room that's bigger than you. 
That's what I would do. You're going to be in the closet. That door is going to be locked. You're going to be on the phone call 911, which is smart, by the way. That's what you should be doing. But you're not going to be the boss in that moment. So I find it interesting that they want to be a boss when it's convenient. Typically, these modern women, by the way, they want to be the boss all the time unless something has to get paid for. You'll see it. You'll see it when the checks come. You'll see it. Then all of a sudden, it's like, well, your money is our money, but my money is my money. (laughs) You'll hear it. You will hear it. So make a decision. Do you want to be a boss? Do you want to be an equal to the man? Because if you do, then you better get ready to split that bill. You better get ready to do a lot of stuff that you're not going to want to do. Okay? Equal is equal. That's what you want. Maybe you'll find a guy out there that's going to hand it to you, but I will tell you, you will be deeply, deeply unhappy. You'll, You'll be running to be a damsel in distress so fast, you'll be like, where's that handkerchief I can wave outside my window? Someone, come save me, please. I was wrong. Okay, let's keep going. She says, we cut it off a little bit. The first thing she says in this next part is, I'm fiercely independent successful, in case that gets cut off. Malik, we can keep going. Well, have all the accolades. I have a great car. Like, guys are obsessed with my car when they see it. There's, like, that first initial, like, whoa. And then when you see it's someone you're about to go on a date with and they don't have something equivalent, I think they're kind of like, oh. The O is very different. (laughs) I travel all over the country. I go to the most beautiful places. I fly first class everywhere. All my food is gonna be paid for. I stay in these like beautiful suites, like overlooking like the ocean. I think I'm pretty mature for my age. I'm 30. I know you don't really say this word, but it's perfect. I have everything. And I think that's like. Okay, she has everything. And then she's gonna say, I think that like weirdly scares guys off. So this is interesting because you're going to see another side to her in a second. So she says, I'm fiercely independent. I'm successful. This is her definition of success, mind you. You know, those stay-at-home wives, they can't be successful in her book. It's different. It's got to be about, it's got to be about the climb, you know? So she's successful. She's got the car. She says, oh, the guys are intimidated by the car. I have everything. She actually says, I am 30. I have everything. Okay. So I was ready for the video to end. I was like, okay, done. You're, you're happy. You've got it all. You seem to be very happy. So end of story. You're just going to be single, right? You can be your own boss, babe. And that's the end of the story, right? Except it's not. Because what you're going to find out is that she has everything, supposedly has everything, and yet she's not happy. Why isn't she happy? Because she's lonely. Because being that boss, babe, has left her without a mate. Now, she said she's looking for a partner. We know about that term. We've talked about that term. But let's hear the rest of what she has to say now and think about what she said up to this point and how it has affected where she's landed. Let's go. That weirdly scares guys off. I have no one to share this like cool ass life with. I'm concerned that the older I get, I'm gonna have to make more sacrifices because I've aged out. Like when I've been on dating apps, like I don't know if anything promising is coming out of it anymore. Just whatever's like left over. I don't wanna be like 36 and single. Okay. It seems to me like you do want to be 36 and single. It seems to me like you're laying out a whole life plan that's going to land you at 36 and single. How, how does any of what you said in the first three quarters of the video take you to a different destination? I mean, she says, oh, it weirdly scares guys that I say I have everything. Well, it's not weird at all, actually. It's, it's, it's perfectly normal that a guy would be like, well, what, am I, what do you need me for? What am I doing here? Right. If you if you've got it all covered, if you're like, well, I'm 30 and I have everything and I've got the car and I take the vacations and I'm, you know, independent and I'm successful and I have all the stuff and all the accolades and guys going to be sitting there like, all right, next. Because guys like to feel like they bring something to the table and that you appreciate what they bring to the table. So they're going to be saying, well, she's got it all covered. What, what, What am I here for? What's the point? Is what I'm bringing to the table not going to be appreciated because she has it all already? You know, the way she lays it out is like, guy's going to be extra, 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 but not necessary. And then she goes on to say she doesn't want to be 36 and single. When I originally watched this and I was taking notes, I wrote a note to myself, like, talk to this woman in five years. Well, you don't need to. She tells you straight up. She's 30. She's saying in five years, I don't want to be single. So has she not taken the time to self-reflect about everything she said? Because if you're saying you have everything and you've got all the bases covered, What kind of invitation is that to a guy to come in and wife you up? Maybe you should talk about what you don't have, what you can't as a female bring to the table, what you're hoping that your husband, a man, 
will bring to the table that you can't, how you're going to be willing to le- want to lean on him, what you uh, how, what your expectations are of him, what his expectations can be of you, how you're different and are going to bring different things to the home. Do you want children? Do you want, what is the dynamic there? Because the way I heard it is she's just going to be single and that's going to be the way it goes. And every guy that would even be remotely inclined to approach her, she's going to try to intimidate out of the box. Like if they try to show her something, oh, I do that already. You could see him trying to take her on a nice vacation. Oh, I've been there. I went last year to blah, 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 blah. And I stayed in this hotel. And I, oh, you have a nice car? Oh, I have one too. Ranging it up. You know what I'm saying? She's out there to prove a point. And I think that is my point, is that a lot of these modern women are out there to prove a point. They studied their feminism so hard, so hard. And they got all the mentoring. And they got all the glorious Steinems in their ear that they feel now that they need to prove to you, to society, to the potential guy that they're going to be with, that they can do it on their own, that they don't need you at all. They have to prove that to you or they feel like they have been a bad feminist or they've been a bad modern woman. They haven't fulfilled their duty as a modern woman. And as a result, they repel these guys because the guys are like, this is not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a woman who's going to say, I have it all and you're extra. You're like sprinkles that I don't really need, but I'm the ice cream. I mean, who wants that type of situation? Ridiculous. So you're going to see that a lot of these modern women are going to wind up single. They're going to wind up single. They're going to wind up alone. They're going to wind up depressed. They're going to wind up anxious. And they're going to start looking back at their life and be like, maybe I didn't have it all. Honey, you're saying I have everything, and in the next breath you're saying you don't have the one thing you really want, which is a person to share all these things with. You don't have everything. You don't. And maybe, maybe you also haven't been that successful because maybe you're defining success by the wrong things, and ultimately you may be able to take that vacation, but maybe you're not as happy on it as you would be if you had somebody there with you. Maybe that damsel in distress didn't sound so bad. Just saying. All right, we're going to get to the chat after this next one, Malik, so keep your eyes on that. All right, I got to do one more before we get to the chat because this is too good. It's too juicy. It's too juicy and it's staring me right in the face and I can't let it go. All right, you ever hear about wife, uh, how a wife infantilizes the husband sometimes? She turns him into like a little baby. Like, oh, he needs to be told what to do. He's inept. He's dumb. He's lazy. Well, this one, this wife took it to a new level. I see this tweet and it says she successfully turned him into a slave. You would not believe it's a daddy sticker chart. I kid you not. We're going to go through what this is. Now, first of all, you look at her. You can keep this on the screen the whole time. You can leave it up. You can look at her. She's got the crazy eyes. You know, you're thinking it, but I'm saying it. She's got the crazy eyes. Something's not right there. You look at him. He looks miserable, like he's ready to throw himself off a bridge. And he also, frankly, a little feminized. Just saying. Okay. Daddy sticker chart on the left, you've got Washed, you've got all the tasks on the left. Wash dishes, put toilet seat down, change, blow out diaper, bathe the rugrats, pack the kids' lunches, vacuum car seats, and clean up throw up. Those are all the responsibilities that she'd like him to do. And then what happens is every time he does them, he gets a little sticker. I'm not kidding. A little sticker. And once he gets one, two, three, four, five, six stickers in each column, he gets a present at the end. The top one is a 12-pack of your favorite beer. The next one is no nagging from her for a week. The third one is a naked hula dance from Crazy Eyes. The fourth one is I won't donate your favorite pit stain t-shirt. In other words, I won't throw your stuff out if you behave. Can you imagine talking to a grown man like this? Next one, um, one get out of the dog house free card. So if you do something bad, I won't get mad. The next one is don't have to go to some, uh, I don't know, annoying kid's birthday party. You get out of going to a birthday party. And the last one is a BJ. He has to get one, two, three, four, five, six stickers in the clean throw-up column before he gets a BJ. Okay, you can take it off the screen now. So how deeply disturbing is that? Now, you can laugh, you can point, we can say she looks like she's got the crazy eyes, but this is a chart typically that moms make for their children, right? Like, oh, you get an, an A in school and we'll check a box, you'll get a sticker, and then at the end you'll get, you know, a video game or whatever it is. You clean up your room and you get an allowance or whatever it may be. She has completely infantilized this male and emasculated him to the point where he is a baby in his own home. I'm sure he gets reprimanded when he doesn't follow her dictates. How deeply embarrassing. Not only that, she took this photo. (laughs) Where did this photo go? 
He's not, I mean, this guy is a person that exists somewhere. I mean, I don't even know, man. Absolutely beyond the pale. I know houses like this. The reason I brought this up is because people could say, oh, Jed, that can't be real. To be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know what's real and what's not here because I can't obviously call these people and verify it. But what I can tell you is I know houses like this. I know houses like this where the guys are completely emasculated and the women are like, did you do this? Oh, you get a prize if you do this. Oh, I remember once a friend of mine, no joke, said to her husband, he had to be on a diet. Doctor told him, and it was like, if he didn't eat a cupcake that week, he got this. If he went out for a walk, he got this. It was like little rewards. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, wow, he's just like an overgrown baby in his own house. All these guys are miserable. All these women run the house. This is happening all the time. Do you know people in chat? Ask, I ask you, do you know people who are married and who live like this? Then you ask men, do you want to get married? And when they see this and they're like, mm -mm, people are like, why not? Why, why not? You want to go into this type of, what do you, you, you get married to go back to preschool? To get treated like a baby? And by the way, they perpetuate this stuff. Like this is something, this would have been a, I guarantee you this would have made it onto like Good Morning America, The View. Oh, ha, 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 look at this guy. Today we're going to talk about a guy who's been infantilized by his wife with a daddy sticker chart. Then they all look and they all weigh in. Oh yeah, my husband's an idiot. My husband can't do anything. Oh, every woman, every man needs a woman to get stuff done. Oh, one day I, my husband did this and he's just, he can be so lazy. Guys can't do anything right. And it's a whole panel of women. The audience is clapping. Yeah. Whole audience of women. And this is the message that's perpetuated about men, that men are useless. Men can't be trusted. Men are a bunch of babies. So you know what? If they act like a baby, treat them like a baby. Reward them like a baby. Can you imagine crazy eyes? Always, by the way, guys, you see the crazy eyes. Turn away. I don't care if she's got a good body. I don't care if the curves are nice. I don't care what's going on from here down. You see the crazy eyes. Turn away. Nothing good comes from a pair of crazy eyes. Just saying. All right. Now we're going to check in with the chat. All right, we got um, we got two chats. One from Russ for two dollars. It didn't have a message, and then there was one for five dollars from KS. But on here it says message retracted. But I caught it before. Oh, caught him before that. He nice. says um, one second. Sorry about that. Retracted uh, KS, message. Successful in one area of life does not mean success in another area. The daddy sticker chart. Uh, the, is she a mother or a wife? There you go. <laughs> She, well, she feels like she could do both, right? And maybe, who knows, maybe her kids have a little sticker chart and it sits next to the, the husband's sticker chart. Can you imagine being in that household? All right, we good to go? Yep. Okay. Remember, get on in that chat, super chats. I'm gonna read your questions, read your comments, so get on in there. Does hormonal birth control change female preferences for men? Interesting. So this is a, I believe this is from Chris Williamson. And we talk a lot about the impact of taking, horm I took hormonal birth control, I said, for, I think it was six years, not for sexual reasons. I took it to regulate a cycle. I was told by traditional medicine doctors that my irregular cycle at the time was going to be, this was going to be the fix. And it was actually hell for me. Um, first of all, they didn't ask about my diet. They didn't ask about my stress. They didn't ask about my exercise. They didn't get to the root of the problem. They just medicated, which is what happens, right? You go to a traditional medicine doctor nine out of 10 times, they don't ask you anything except here, this will fix your symptom. But they don't get to the root cause of why you feel that way. As it turns out, I was able to fix that irregular cycle on my own when I stopped being brainwashed by the system simply by changing diet and altering exercise and making some healthy life adjustments, putting in a sauna, um, sauna time every week, you know, meditation, it was done, fixed, which is interesting. Anyway, what I always remembered about that time period for me was that I was very different on birth control than when I got off. I really felt like I was in a different body in many ways and a different mind. So let's listen to what this woman says and then we're going to talk about it. And I think this is important not only for women listening who may be on hormonal contraception or have been in their life at some point, but also guys, you may be dating someone who's on these pills and it sounds like a quick fix, right? Like, oh yeah, go on birth control so you don't have to worry about getting pregnant. It's actually quite sinister in many respects what happens on birth control pills, in my opinion. Um, and there's a darkness to it. And there's a complexity to it that you may not be realizing. So let's play this video. I'm going to play this one in full um, up until I tell you to stop. Thanks. 
at women who are on hormonal birth control, this might be associated with a decreased preference for masculinity. And there is some evidence that is consistent with this. There's been research showing that women who are on hormonal birth control prefer a less masculinized male face relative to what's preferred by the exact same women when they are naturally cycling. That's an ad. Birth control. There we go. Um, well, I spent most of my career uh, studying women's sexual behavior and, uh, and mate attraction and partner choice. Um, and, uh, and I'd even done some work looking at women's sex hormones and the way that influences uh, women's motivation and choice of dress and other things to that effect. Um, and so I've always had an interest in women's psychology and the different sort of biological components that contribute to okay. like, sort of Let's what it means. Okay, pause it here. I just want to go into who she is a little bit. So this is someone who studies this for a living. And there's another clip here that I wanted to show. It's not going to that exact part. But essentially what she said in that first section is that women prefer when they're on birth control pills, they have a decreased preference for masculinity. Interesting. There's a lot of studies actually to back that up. And my initial thought was, well, what happens if a woman meets you she goes on, she's on hormonal birth control, right? A lot of young women are. This is prescribed, by the way, and overprescribed to such an extent. I truly cannot even outline for you how extensive. I mean, a woman goes into the doctor for everything from acne to a regular cycle to, I mean, it's, it's a wide list of things, and they just hand you birth control pills. Like, oh, yeah, take these. It'll fix everything. And what happens if that woman goes on the pill and is with you, say, for the duration. She goes on the pill, say, at 21. She meets you at 22. She's with you till 24. She goes off the pill, and suddenly, she's not that into you anymore. You laugh. But hormones control everything. And the reason I'm telling you that I believe there's some truth to this is not just because studies will indicate that women have different preferences based on when they're on the pill, but because I experienced things myself. When I went, I remember dating someone early on when I was young, and I loved his cologne. Loved it. Like, I could smell that cologne anywhere. I loved it. Went off birth control, and I remember seeing him years later, ran into him in a place, and I was like, oh, what's that smell? It was the same cologne. But I was smelling stuff differently. Like, the chemicals in my body had been so changed by not having that synthetic hormone that I not only did I feel differently, but I, I smelled things differently. I was attracted to different scents. I, my body gravitated toward different things. Remember, your hormones run everything in your body. They run everything in your body. So if you have a certain cocktail of synthetics brought in to alter where you're at, what does that do to your perceptions? And you have a whole population of young women that are taking these pills for everything. Even if they're not having sex, they're taking them. Oh, I'm breaking out. Birth control. I mean, so they're flooded with these chemicals and they're not in their true body. They're not in their true sexuality. Oftentimes your uh, sexuality is depressed when you're on hormonal birth control. So your sex drive is depressed as a female. That happens a lot because your testosterone is depressed. There's a lot that goes on in the female body and then you go off the pill and suddenly you're like, oh my God, what the heck? This is a completely different body. So it's also interesting from the male perspective though. Say you're dating a girl She's on the pill. She's a certain type of way. And then all of a sudden she goes off and it's like, who is this imposter girlfriend? It does happen. It does happen. Hormones are very, very strong things. So it was just interesting to think about that in terms of your own life. Um, and also interesting that if the traditional medical community is so easy to give out these pills, like it's like, oh yeah, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. And these pills suppress female, um, you know, sex drive not terribly helpful for relationships. Oh, look at that, a tool of the matrix. I just I just discovered another one, sitting under a rock. Prevents that union, gets in the way, delays the family planning, because you, you could be with somebody for 10 years. You're playing house, you're on the birth control pill, you're not really gonna get with them and make a family, you know that. But you got these pills, so you're having fun, this, that. It elongates that period of time mentally, too, where you look at it all differently. You wake up at 35 and you're like, oh my God, what did I do for the last 10 years? Like a lost decade. Just saying. All right, let's get to Hunter Avalone. Hunter Avalone does this uh, streaming, as you know. He's, like, very liberal. Apparently used to be conservative. Now he's, like, vegan. He's all in on the, on the liberalism. And he goes after Sneeko. Um, let's go to 258. Let's listen to what Sneeko says, because a lot of what happens, what unfolds in the rest of this is based off of Sneeko's initial comments. So let's do 258 first. 
concerned about what you're doing right now because your past does matter. You're right. And the guy that you want will care about that. That's something you need to wake up to. Okay. Snickle, can you go in the past? Can I go in the past? Well, can your, anybody go into the past? Your past okay. reflects your future. Well, when she finds the man, they're going to build a better future. Okay, for but right when now, she's, she's 27, which is going to be 35, when she decides that she wants to settle down, when she gives up on her, like going out of the clubs, being 21 and hot, when she gives up on that, she's going to realize that the guy that she really wants to be with is going to care about her past. And then she's going to be sad. She's going to blame men and she become a le So maybe he'll care about her past in the sense that how many people she's been with physically prior, which I don't really think is even that big of a deal so long as obviously she doesn't have any STDs or something. Maybe he would care about that, but why would he care if she's posting like skimpy photos on Instagram? Maybe guys should be a little less insecure. Why would he be like, when you were 21, you posted a hot bikini pic on your Instagram. How dare you? This okay. is despicable. Okay, so that's Hunter responding to Sneeko. What Sneeko says here, totally reasonable. Totally reasonable and accurate. Um, again, we find ourselves in this topic of men caring about female promiscuity. They just do. They just do. And even if they meet you at 30, they don't want to find out that at 21 and 22, you were hopping in and out of bed with everybody, you know, going to the club, partying. They don't want to know about that. And they don't want, to, they don't want that to have been your past. That's not appealing to them, that you've been, you know fluid with your sexuality in the sense of like oh everybody gets a piece not attractive not appealing and what he's saying is you're going to ultimately get to that age of say 28 and you're going to want that guy a certain type of guy that has value himself and that guy's going to look back on your past when you were behaving badly and not like that and he's going to go for somebody who didn't make those choices and you're going to be upset and you're not going to be able to undo that so it's really a message to young women like listen Guys care about this, so figure out what you want your next decade to look like. And if you decide you don't want to cater it to what guys like or don't like, that's your choice. But then know also that your decisions may have consequences, and you may not be able to get that guy you want at the end of the day because he does care about how you lived the last decade, whether you like it or not. It's just a reality of the world. Reality bites sometimes, but it's true. Okay. So then he talks about, Sneeko seems to, I mean, Hunter seems to think that the only issue about promiscuity is talking about STDs. And, oh, as long as you're safe, what, what, what is, sure, nobody wants you to have had an STD. Yes, that's bad. But it's not just about that. It's not about like, oh, did you get away with all the promiscuity and hopping in and out of bed and meaningless sex and treating your body like, you know, waste material, but you didn't get an STD, so it's all good. No, that's not all it's about because those decisions are a reflection of who you are and what you value. And if guys are looking for somebody who's going to be the mother of their child, they can't reconcile those two images of hopping in and out of bed with everyone, not respecting your own body, and now somehow inside that body a few years later is going to be my baby. No, that's not an image that they can reconcile comfortably. I understand it 100%. Then he brings up bikini photos, and he starts like, well, why would you care about a bikini photo? And this, there's a lot of gray in this area. There are people who put photos at a, in a bikini. They're at the beach. They're having a day, whatever. Okay, fine. And then there's what you often see on Instagram now and what you see on OnlyFans now, which is this constant state of hypersexualization. People are pulling the bikini down. They're exposing this, that. Sometimes there's outright nudity. Sometimes it's so close to nudity. It's not sporadic like, oh, there's a bikini pic on 4th of July and then you don't see one for another year. No, it's the whole page. You're selling sex. You're making money off your sexuality. That's different. So that does matter, again, because it, it tells you a lot about who that person it is and what they're hardwired for. So even if you change, even if you wake up at 25 and you are different, and I'm not saying people can't change, there's something in you that allowed you to make those decisions that another woman doesn't have. There's a woman out there, I, for example, could never do that promiscuous life. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And there was a period of time where I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I am going to do it because I was so frustrated. Like, why are these people around me able to do this? What is wrong with me? As it turns out, there was something right with me because it's not natural and it's not something that women should be doing and it's not something we're inclined to do. And these women who are promiscuous are going against their nature. And I just couldn't do it. So I never did. And that is valuable. That is ultimately valuable to that husband that you land because it provides a lot of security to him because it's not in you, right? It's not in you. That cheating, it's not in you. If you can't have casual sex without, you know, you, if you can't do it, right, that's not what you're, you're wired for, and you need sex to be paired with emotion, you're not going to cheat. 
You're not because you can't do it. It's like you just cannot wrap yourself around that. If you're somebody who's fickle about sex your whole life and then wakes up one day and wants a husband, but you're hardwired for that fickleness, that behavior may repeat. And guys well, well know that. And they, they make an assessment based on that. Don't be angry that the assessment is made. Be angry at yourself that you made those decisions. Own it and let the consequences be what they are. Okay, let's go to 427 on this one. Let's see what he says. A version of her right now shouldn't matter to her future husband. It, 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 it doesn't matter what it should or shouldn't do. It does. It just does. But when the time comes that she does meet her husband, yeah, be transparent. Let him know the life you were living at this age. Whoa. But at that time, when you do meet him, the version of you now, the wife you are that's when you marry him, that, that present day, that's what matters. Not what you were doing when you were Let me ask the ladies a question. This is such no. a two-dimensional okay. way. Actually, let's play Hunter. I'm sorry. Way of looking at things from both the, the women on this panel and the red pill cucks. Who you were at the age of 21 through 26 is going to shape who you are at the age of 27 when you're ready to settle down. So it's not just like, oh, it doesn't matter. It does matter because it's the past you that has led to the you currently. I think that it is going to matter to a degree. But again, if that's like a deal breaker, because what, she liked to go clubbing and posted some skimpy pics online? then yeah, then I think that guy's probably insecure. Question here, so I okay, can kind so of- Okay, so let's pause that though, because Hunter does this, and I'm sure he's gonna do it when he's here. He picks like these very odd examples, like, oh, he minimizes it. So, oh, it's just somebody who liked to go clubbing. That's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about somebody who liked to go clubbing and maybe posted a bikini pic here and there. That's not what they're talking about. Like, oh, she went to the beach on a Saturday with her friends and there she is in a bikini, no. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is somebody who was promiscuous, who was easy with their body, who did not value sex, who didn't pair sex with emotion, and who constantly and perpetually hypersexualized themselves, oftentimes for money on the internet, not attractive. That is the example that we're talking about, not some girl who went to the club a few times. So stop minimizing the reality of how men feel about this. The reality is that these things, when they are done in extremes, are not attractive. And the reality also is that the extremes are becoming heavily normalized and more and more common. Hence, OnlyFans. Okay, let's go to 740. This is great about women and what they want about, let's play it, 740. 10 times or dress in a certain way or go to the gym, it's typically to push the clock back to look more youthful because women know deep down, makeup takes away wrinkles. Women typically want to look more youthful because that makes them more attractive. That's what men are attracted to. But even her, who belongs... Isn't just, like, uh, youthfulness and and being healthy and attractive quality for people in general? I feel like that's also getting into some weird territory. Like, youthfulness sounds almost creepy, in my opinion. Like, yeah, guys are not into old women, sure. But to say that they like them to be youthful... What do you mean youthful? Like early 20s? Okay, fine, but I don't know. It's kind of sussy, especially when these types will say also that men really like youthfulness and innocence and purity and shit like that. That sounds really fucking creepy. Why does it sound creepy? Why does that sound creepy? I can't wait to ask him when he comes here. Why does that sound creepy? It sounds perfectly reasonable to me that a guy would say... Now, and remember, let's make the distinction here because... They're not talking about guys who get married and are with somebody for 15 years and grow with that person and share children. They're talking about people who are looking for a partner. They're out in that marketplace now. They're dating. Their eyes are, you know, they're at the lounge or they're and what they observe. That's what they're really focused on here. That's where the, the, the crux of the conversation is in, in, on this panel. Purity is appealing to guys, meaning, again, that you didn't hop into, in and out of bed with everybody. Innocence also means that you haven't been jaded by the world. It's a beautiful thing. It means that you haven't been through a bunch of relationships that left you feeling dark. It means that you don't have a lot of that baggage that you pull from a bad relationship back into the next one. It means that you've had less hurt, less pain, less crying, less stress navigating the ups and downs of life because you're younger and you just haven't been through that stuff yet. And a good guy, a really good guy will want to spare you some of that stuff. He'll want to come into your life and create something for you, stability and financial and otherwise. And, you know, he'll want to protect you and he'll want to provide for you. So you don't have to go through a lot of the stuff that some modern women do go through in those 20s. That's awful and painful and horrible. 
So they're trying to get you before all of that. What is bad about that? That seems like a perfectly reasonable human instinct, male instinct. And beauty, beauty is what it is. That's not to say that beauty can't occur at different ages. That's not to say that a man married for 20 years doesn't look at his wife and find her beautiful. Of course, that can be. But we all know that there's a whole beauty industry out there for women centered around looking younger. Botox, oh, what does Botox do? Well, let's be honest, it makes everybody look freaky. But the goal is to remove lines, right? So that you can't do this. See what I'm doing? I don't do any of that stuff. So the goal is like, oh, let's try to fake youth. The odd reality of that is that young people's faces move. So really, you just wind up looking like a weird creature. Separate topic. But that's the goal. That's how it's sold. Like, oh, you're going to look younger. Filler is all to, to restore that volume of your baby face. And no matter how great you look, I'm 43. I take good care of myself. I think I look pretty good on a good day. You know, I got myself together. But if you put me side by side with my 20-year-old face, I had a baby face right? It's a different face. You're older, you've matured. You know, it's just different. Same for guys, by the way. They get more angular in the face. Things change because 20 is 20. And there is something uniquely beautiful about youth, I think for everyone, truthfully, but particularly for women. I think there is something uniquely beautiful about that stage of life. That doesn't mean that you can't be beautiful at 50, at 60, at 70, but there is something uniquely beautiful about youth because it also is coupled with that innocence and you haven't been jaded by the world, and coupled with the fact that you haven't experienced a lot of the harshness of life. And that's just true. That's not creepy. That's not weird. It just is. And by the way, they try to make this when, they, when guys talk about youth. Sneeko and all of them talk about youth. Hunter's like, makes it like he's talking about like an eight-year-old. He's not. He's talking about a 22-year-old. He's talking about a young 20s girl is what he's talking about. Of age but not jaded by the world and hopefully not, you know, bouncing in in and out of bed with everybody. Although now a 22 year old, you'd be hard pressed to find with the way people behave in college. By the time they get out of college, the body count is already like double digits, if not more. Nasty. All right. Let's go to Malik's like, why did I, why did I sign up for this? All right. Let's go to nine minutes. Um, Let's go to nine. Um, looks well, well, it trickles down from looks, that. That's, that's where it starts. And if you're not attractive, then we don't want to spend time with you. Hey, gold bowl boys, I don't want to. Wow. Well, thank you for just saying it straight up, Sneeko. That's the weird thing, too. It lets you in on their mindset, how they think about women. For people like Sneeko, low IQ, cucks, literal cuckolds, for, for them, they don't even want to hang out with a woman outside of the potential to fuck her. That's it. They don't even care, like... Maybe she's a good friend. Maybe she is somebody who's interesting to be around. Maybe she's somebody who just, I really hit it off with in a way that's more platonic and I enjoy hanging out with this person. <laughs> no, for people like Sneeko and these fresh and fit losers, it is literally just do not even spend time with a single woman unless you have some intention or desire to fuck her. It's okay, just so kinda- let's fill Hunter in on something called reality. It's a little something called reality, Hunter. Most men don't just want to sit and hang around with women just to to form friendships. That's just, it's just not how it works. Men are drawn to women that they find attractive, that they are attracted to, that they want to either hook up with, they want to date, they want to make something happen, they catch your eye and you feel something and that's what your goal is. They're not, they're not out there like, oh, that, that girl looks like she'd be a really great friend. That's not to say you can't meet somebody in your life that's a, a woman as a guy and, and, you know, get to know them and maybe you're not attracted to them at all because that happens too and, and you form some type of friendship. But that is not how men process a room when they look around and where their eye goes to. And if you're in the dating world where you are actively looking for someone to date, to be physical with, whatever you're out there looking for, looks matter. Why do we have to pretend that they don't matter? They matter to men and they matter to women. They matter. You have to be attracted to that person. So now we're supposed to pretend like guys don't prioritize looks. Why do we have to live in the land of make-believe? Guy goes to a club and he's looking around the room. What does he go and have a conversation with? Oh, you seem, you seem deeply respectful. That may be true and that may be great and he may want someone who's respectful, but again, he's gotta be attracted to you first. 
This is human nature. And ladies, own up. When you see guys, you, attractiveness matters, how they hold themselves, whether they're confident. Are they put together? If they look dirty and they're overweight and they're slouching over, you're like, bye. So this is just, you know, this, this desire to be woke is always a thing. Like, oh, we got to be woke. We got to pretend like we don't care about things that we actually care about. Why can't we just say it? Why does everybody have to be so nauseating? Oh, it's not looks. It's about who you are as a person and all these talking points. Yeah, sure. After somebody's decided they're attracted to you, then they want to know what, how you are as a person. But if they don't want to sleep with you, mm, next. Imagine now we got to talk about guys like they're out looking for female friends left and right. How many guys you know, men, not boys, not feminized men, out there scoping out a scene to see how they can accrue more female friends. Can we just be realistic about that not being a pattern? Come now, Hunter. Okay, we have one more and then we're gonna go to the chat. 1545. You want the guy that's attractive that has options, he's not gonna want to wife up a girl that comes with a certain type of past. Women look uh, women look for a man with a future. Can you like explain what that certain type of past is then, please? What what do you mean what past? A man looks for a woman that doesn't have a past. So what he's simply telling you is as you how much does this how much past is it like you slept with other people so no or is it like i can't believe when you were not fully graduated from college you were working at a fucking subway you despicable sick hoe okay so and want- let's let's stop it here and then we'll be done with hunter because it's a lot so he doesn't know anything about red pill he doesn't know anything about Myron, he doesn't know anything about these guys. He, he, just, he just comments, but he, he doesn't do research because if you did that, you would know that Myron has said multiple times and all of the guys in this circle have said multiple times that they don't care if you worked at Subway. They don't care if you work at Target. That's not what they're talking about when they talk about a past because they don't care about your career as a priority. You have something you like to do and you're happy, great. But that's not a priority for them. They don't need you to be the CEO. They have told you that a bunch of times. It's not important to them. It's important that you're happy and pleasant to be around, that you have a nice disposition, that you're not going to stress them out to the max. But your job title is not important. So he's throwing this point out about Subway, and they're like laughing at him. Or they should be. Or they would if they could hear that, because they don't care about that stuff. When you talk about a past, you're talking about promiscuity. Period. End of story. You're talking about whether that woman has allowed herself to lose con- connection with her body where she doesn't care about it. It's been minimized. Like it's like, ooh, she'll just sleep with anybody. If she's devalued herself and if she's allowed herself to get damaged by a bunch of really bad relationships that she's gotten into of her own volition, that now she's going to take that damage and throw it onto a guy. She's going to make that next guy pay for what she had. She allowed herself to go through over and over and over and over again. I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about bad relationships where you know you date the guy you're not supposed to date and you do it anyway over and over and over again. And then you don't trust the nice guy that comes across your path five years later because you're judging him based off what this other guy did. And the reason that guy got away with it is because you allowed it over and over and over again. Own up, personal responsibility. All right, let's check in with the chat. All right, we got uh, one from $10 from Lil Casely, $20. I live in a blue state, California. My entire (laughs) family is conservative. However, the new generation of girls do not want to listen to traditional values. We're at a loss as they are almost totally brainwashed. You said, he said he's in California. Yep. Get out of California. One, Uh, you'd be surprised. Take a little trip to the Midwest. Take a little, get out of the cities. Take a little trip to the country. You'd be surprised how many women there are out there that don't exist in the cities and don't exist in blue areas that actually really value traditional values. I don't know if you're religious, but oftentimes, you know, people who are raised religious have a deeper appreciation of that stuff, of, you know, sex, of things like that, have being held in high esteem and being important. You are right that it is, a, it's a dying, it's a dying art. It's dying. But those people still do exist. It's just going to be harder to find them. That's a reality. It's an unfortunate reality. I'm just grateful I'm not dating right now. <sighs> what a nightmare. Sorry. All right. We got one. Five dollars from Josh Rickert. If a woman uses her body to build a business, she would have to use her body to keep it. Oh, there you go. Well played. Yeah, we got one from Omega Resetsu. He is low value and cannot comprehend high value matters. He seems the type that would, wouldn't care if his wife has a boyfriend and pregnant bio. 
Mm, she's talking about Hunter. Yeah. He's he's a liberal. He's a, he's just a liberal. And and I say no disrespect to him because he's coming here, but you know, you're free to have your own view of the world, but I always say liberals are so not just Hunter, but in general are so worried about catering to wokeism that they begin to justify ignoring reality in order to cater to it. You know, it's kind of like the obesity is healthy mantra. It's not. We all know it's not. But they have to say that because they'll hurt somebody's feelings. So now the factual reality that obesity is a leading cause of disease has to be ignored. Think about it like that. All right. We got one from KS again. $5. How can you tell if a woman is promiscuous? What if she's silent about her past? You'll see a lot of indication. Um, you'll, you'll hear stuff. Who does she hang out with? Take a look at her friends. Is there a girl's night out? What does that look like? How does she behave when she's out with you in the club? Is she looking for attention all the time? Or is she focused on you? Are you invited out when they go to the club? Or is it like stay at home? We're going to go out with the girls. Does she talk about any guys in the past at all? What does that look like? Does she? Does it look at her Instagram? Scroll all the way down. What does it look like? Are there still pictures of guys that she was with before and now she's with you, but those pictures still up? I don't like that. Stuff like that. There's signs. Even if they're... Their signs. All right, we got three more. JD, $5. Welcome to the land of the two free. My wife is 24, and I don't even want to raise kids here in the U.S. because it's literally Disneyland. It's about them feels. There you go. All right, we got one from Lori, the engine, five euros. If she's clearly losing interest in you, DM responses slow. She goes to work. To, uh, instead of spending time with you, sex talk stops. And then finished, question mark. Look for the signs. Yeah. <laughs> we One got more. John Michael Julian. Sometimes it's better to not enter the dating world. It's become easy to get rejected for about any reason. Well, I, I hear you, but like if you want a family and you want to be married, you kind of have to, I mean, I say like I'm glad I'm not dating right now, and I am, but if I were young now and dating and I wanted – to get married you just got to go through it you just got to be smart about it and you got to live in the right place I can't stress it enough one of my biggest mistakes and I you know what it wasn't a mistake because I landed with the best man and the best child I got really lucky but staying in New York City did not help me and had I picked up and went and moved to you know someplace where traditional values are more upheld I think that that trajectory would have looked a little bit different now, I wouldn't change it because I wouldn't have my man and my baby as they are, but I can give advice to younger people and say, get out of the damn city and get out of the, get out of the blue cities now. Uh, that's it for Super that's Chats it? for okay, now. Okay, yep. cool. All right, we're going to do uh, Matrix stuff, very important stuff, and then I'm going to come back to the chat. So if you have comments on the Matrix and how, you know, how they're out to wreck your life, some of this stuff's going to be really interesting too because it has to do with meat eating and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. We stick it up there to remind me, to remind you, you know, I love to, uh, I love to have you guys here and present. So give me some love. That's what I want for Christmas. There you go. You asked and now I've told you. I don't need any milk and cookies, although that would be nice. My husband, if you're listening, chocolate chip, just saying. And subscribes and likes. All right. So we're going to talk about some stuff here that's a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy. We'll start with, oh, I just moved away from the mic. Sorry about that. We'll start with the World Health Organization press release. This was fascinating to me. World Health Organization member states agree to develop a zero draft of legally binding pandemic accord in early 2023. So I look and I'm like, well, well that's interesting. World Health Organization. United States is a member state, by the way, so this involves you uh, if you live in the U.S. Almost everyone is a member state, probably who's listening to this show. How does that affect you? So I'm like, well, what does that mean, a zero draft of legally binding pandemic accord? I read on. Let's take a look. The first draft of a legally binding agreement designed to protect the world from future pandemics. Huh, that's interesting. And I always tell you stuff that comes in from the matrix. Number one is that they try to tell you we're here to protect you. We're here to everything that we're going to do from here on out is to protect you. Why is that? Because they need your trust. They need your trust. Once they've got it, the mandates roll in. All right. So let's see what it is. This was a milestone in the global process to learn from the COVID-19 pandemic and prevent a repeat of the devastating impacts it had on individuals and communities worldwide. So in other words, 
they looked at COVID-19 and what they could get away with in the name of lockdowns and mandates and all this stuff. And they were like, hmm, what could we roll out next? If there were, by chance, another pandemic, who knows, coming down the pike, what could we do to increase compliance? That's what this is about. What could we do to, to increase compliance in the name of protecting your safety? How do we get people to sign on the dotted line, sign their freedom away? What could we do? Well, this accord, is this draft, is the start. Let's take a look. Countries have delivered a clear message that the world must be better prepared, coordinated, and supported to protect all people everywhere from a repeat of COVID-19. The decision to task us with this duty to develop a zero draft of a pandemic accord represents a major milestone in the path toward making the world, there's your word again, safer. And there's a tweet about that from Tedros over at the World Health Organization that says, I welcome the agreement by the member states to, to develop this pandemic accord designed to protect the world from future pandemics and to continue discussions on the draft in February of 2023. So you ask, what is this thing? What is it? Why do I care? Why do I need to be concerned about it? Well, why do you want the United States, let's say you live in the United States. I know there's people from all around the world listening, but let's say we live in the United States. I do. I'm here, and you have this perception that, you know, Joe Biden's in office and Joe Biden is making those decisions. And maybe you have a problem with Joe Biden like I do, so you don't trust that. Well, what if you knew that Joe Biden were going to defer to the World Health Organization, to these independent bodies, maybe it's the World Economic Forum, and when a pandemic hit, no matter whenever that is and whatever it looks like, there was going to be a protocol that was put in place that was just followed by all of the member states, meaning all of those countries. And all of a sudden, it wouldn't be up to Joe Biden. So whatever we had signed and agreed to, the United States would immediately fall into place. So if that means that there's mandatory masking, we have to do it. If that means there's a mandatory injection of an experimental vaccine, everybody has to get it. If that means that you can't travel unless you show a vax passport, everyone has to do that. If that means a digital ID, to guarantee the safety of the citizens, then everybody has to get it. Then suddenly you are digitized. You are enrolled in a system where they are tracking you and you have no say about it. So that's what, that's what this draft is. Now, it hasn't been put into place yet, but that is their goal, that they are going to be able to say, there's a crisis. Is there a crisis? Well, that'll be up to them. Maybe you think it's not a crisis, but they get to decide, oh, there's a crisis. We have to implement, it's code red. All member states activate. They activate and suddenly you have no freedom. Your decision making has been ripped away from you and you are now landing at the feet of whatever they decide your fate will be. Your family, your child, maybe your child can't go to school without getting this, that or the other thing. Maybe you don't even know what that's gonna look like. That's why that's scary. Why would you want sovereign countries to give all of their authority to make these decisions over to these bodies. This is the matrix. You know, people talk about the matrix, like, oh, what is it really? Who runs it? This is it. This is it. World Health Organization, World Economic Forum, these institutions, these bodies that want superior power over your individual rights and freedom. And they want to be able to do a clean sweep across a bunch of countries. They want to be up here. And then all the countries are down here following suit. You understand how scary that is? Because then it's not just about Joe Biden. You change, you change the person, the president who's in office, and guess what? You're still subject to these things because there's someone above them that's making these decisions for your child. Okay. In the meantime, we have people like Bill Gates out there. Do gooder. Oh, yeah. Imagine believing that. And he decides that he wants to start a vegan dairy startup. You know Bill Gates all about eating the bugs, all about all this stuff. Well, I see this, and it's like totally vegan buzz is the article. Bill Gates invests in alt-dairy startup in $75 million funding round. Oh, just $75, Bill? You're getting cheap. You're getting cheap. So I read on, as somebody who knows a lot about food and a lot about health, the tech entrepreneur's venture company invested in Nobel Foods, which has created casein, a protein found in cow's milk, from a plant source in order to make vegan cheese with the same realistic stretch, melt, and mouthfeel of dairy cheese. Nasty. Oh, look who else. Let's see. Billionaire Gates has led a $75 million funding Series B. And who else is involved? Jack Ma, that's a 
he's a co-founder of a tech conglomerate, Jeff Bezos of Amazon and George Soros. What a surprising bunch to all be working together on something, don't you think? So I read a little bit more and it says Nobel, this company uses genetically engineered soybeans. That's GMO soybeans, people. Unhealthy as could be to produce the casein. And when you read more, it says he's invested in multiple plant-based brands in the past, such as Beyond Meat, a fungi-based technology, Nature's Find, and a cultured meat company. According to the tech entrepreneur, animal agriculture is at the forefront of the climate crisis. Here we go. There you go. You got it. Climate change. So you can't eat raw milk. By the way, don't you love the FDA? They don't like raw milk and raw dairy. Comes from the farm. But this stuff, this stuff works. Okay. So I decided that I was going to take a look at this nature's find. I said, well, let's see what's in it. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. I know what's in it because I know what these products are made of and it's disgusting. So I pull up the meatless breakfast patties from nature's find and I look at the ingredients. Nutritional fungi protein, water, high alic sunflower oil, soy protein isolate, natural flavors, which is, that just means they, they won't tell you what's in it. It could be anything. It's like fragrance. You could have like 50 chemicals in there being natural flavors and they won't tell you. And then a bunch of stuff, salt, modified food starch, ca oh, carrageenan, I never say that right. That's a gut, people say you got gut problems. That is an inflammatory, it creates inflammation in the gut lining. So in other words, we could take this off too, Malik. In other words, garbage. So they want you to eat meatless breakfast patties filled with all sorts of chemical compounds, nasty garbage. You know what's in a breakfast patty that's just, um, say, a beef breakfast patty? Beef. Chicken, chicken. Maybe they chop some onion or some spices. That's the extent of it. These people are really, really out to get you. Now, what happens, let's say, they, they scream climate change, oh my God, crisis, crisis. Let's invest in these companies. Crisis, crisis, crisis. And then you wind up not eating your grass-fed meat from the farm and your raw milk that you've been doing for a while. You're like, let me do the vegan stuff. And then you start getting sick. You start feeling ill. And then suddenly you go to the doctor, you go to your traditional medicine doctor, and you know all they know how to do is disseminate medications. Then they give you drugs and Big Pharma makes money off that. And who has also a lot of investment in Big Pharma? Well, that's interesting, Bill Gates. This is all just too much of a coincidence for me. The Matrix. The Matrix thinks you're dumb. And here's what I'm out to tell you. Get smart. It's your body. It's your family. Get smart. Now, I look, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit of, of good news. Before we show you what the lab-grown steak looks like, because you really need to see it, Beyond Meat, which is that other company. Remember I told you Kim Kardashian was eating that Beyond Meat? Nasty. She wasn't eating it. Everybody was making fun of her because it looked like she hadn't bitten it. <laughs> you hadn't, honey. You went home and had that steak for dinner. We know. Anyway, Beyond Meat, I see in the New York Post, is plummeting the stocks. And it says they're in a sales slump because people say they're too woke. It says analysts say a woke image with consumers in addition to high prices is the blame. Meat brands are too woke. So people are stopping. They're not buying it anymore. They don't want to eat the Beyond Meat because it's too woke. And the reality is that's not why. The reason that people don't want to eat Beyond Meat anymore is because there are too many informed people who look healthy, who know what they're talking about, who are, who are saying this, this is garbage, and they're talking about real meat and stuff. And people are just, their eyes are open. And they know. I mean, how, you don't have to be a brainiac to turn a box over and if there's a whole bunch of ingredients you can't recognize you probably shouldn't be consuming that food you turn over another box and it's like oh it's, well not a box you turn over another package of meat and you're like oh there's chicken interesting so chicken or these 75 things i can't pronounce huh let's debate i mean you'd have to be a total moron to not understand what's going on there so again the bill gates of the world think you're an idiot and by the way they rely on you being an idiot they rely on you being an idiot or they don't make money so don't be one. All right, I'm going to close out with this. The World Economic Forum decided to step in on this, the matrix, and they decided they were going to prioritize lab-grown steak. Oh, that's interesting. So in other words, cows are a problem. The cow farts and everything. Like, oh, climate change. Every time a cow farts, it's a problem, which is a lie. And they say, well, 
the cows are problems. So we need to do something different. So they want to do lab grown steak. We have the tweet of that. Yeah. Let's play the video so you can see it. Hmm. Nasty. They grow them in that. I'm, okay, so what is that sitting in? What's that? Is it water? I don't think so. Is there chemicals in that compound that that supposed meat is sitting in? How are they growing? What are you adding to it? What is that? What's the ingredient in that? Does that look wholesome to you? Does that look like it came straight off the farm? Oh, fortify with extra vitamins. Are they synthetic? Or are they food-based? Okay, let's stop it here. So yeah, now they're gonna say, oh, it's crucial because we gotta, we gotta feed everybody. And you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna go into these countries and you're gonna give them toxic food? Interesting. I'm not saying there's a population control agenda, but some say that out there. It's not coming from me, but you know, people surmise. So does that little piece of fake look to you like something you'd wanna just getting out, you're at the restaurant, you're like, yeah, it's coming, you know, you're hungry, and it comes this little, you're cutting it with your fork, it's gummy. You know that it came from a lab, so you know it's like, whatever they put in it, all that synthetic, you see the little eyedropper with that red liquid, what's that, honey? They're not gonna tell you what it is. Oh, it's good for you. It's good for you, Bill Gates said. Every time he's sitting having a big filet mignon, Brussels sprouts on the side. He's bought a whole bunch of farmland. He's got cows grazing, free range, chickens dropping the eggs, having a big omelet in the morning. Yeah, it's good for you. As he chops that filet mignon, one extra bite. Mm, went down real good. Telling you, man, people at the top, these elites, they're always going to do this. Separate set of rules for them. Because you know what? Bill Gates doesn't want to get sick. He doesn't want to get sick. And he doesn't want to be, be relegated to having to take those big pharma drugs that he also knows are problematic. But you, it's different. This is the matrix. The reason I am showing you this stuff is because you got Andrew Tate, you got these people, you got all these people in the space where we talk about dating and relationships talking about the matrix, and people miss out. They're like, well, maybe that's extreme. No, these people are plugged in. These people are plugged into all the nasty that's going on to try to take your health from you, to try to rob your freedom from you, and they're trying to shake you and wake you up and say, no digital IDs, no thank you to the bugs. I think Tate was talking about beef jerky the other day. He said something about like sub in beef jerky for everything. He knows what's going on. Don't think he doesn't know what's going on. He knows what's going on. We're going to check in with the chat now one last time. All right. We got about four. We got a uh, Heisenberg evil. Five dollars. Ever hear government say it's for your safety? No, they're about to take your freedom or even your life. That's Run. Right. Yep. Right. True. We got a uh, Jets Human, $5. If you think that's bad, check out Terra Carta. It's the Magna Carta for the fourth industrial revolution. ESG looks like a joke in comparison. Wouldn't surprise me. Yep, good point. Yep. And then uh, last one. Great topic today, Jed. Still think you'd be doing higher numbers with your feet up on the table. Just ha! <laughs> So funny. Yeah, you know. The foot fetish crowd, it's an interesting crowd, I'm just going to say. I joked about that, like the first show. I was like, should I just kick him up here and just, you know, you never know, maybe 100K, just saying. God, production team at Valuetainment is like, what's she saying? Cut the mics, cut the mics. <laughs> it's my show. I get to decide. All right, everyone, thank you for being here today. There will be a show on Friday as well uh, this week. I apologize for missing Monday, but, you know, the swelling, not pretty. Anyway, I will see you back here on Friday. Behave, just saying.